Hey, yo, hey everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video. Today, we're going to be doing some Zelda Timeline Theory. Now, a while back, I did a Timeline Theory video for Zelda, mapping out which games go where, and kind of gave you a general direction on a Timeline Theory. And after that, I did a video on which comes first, Minish Cap or Ocarina of Time. Since then, I've talked to a lot of Zelda fans and debated with them and theorized, healthy debating, no arguing, and I found a few flaws with my timeline, so I decided to kind of spruce things up, and thus, I'm doing this video. In this video, I'm going to give you three possible Zelda timeline theories. Now, before we even start the video itself, before we do the theorizing, you have to understand that these timelines are exactly what they are, a theory. These are just theories. There is no official Zelda timeline. Or at least if there is, we don't know about it. Now there has been statements made by developers, but those statements usually clash with each other. And there's been some theories and evidence presented by gamers, but really they're just theories in that. And there has been some stuff and statements in games, but really those, those are very uh, few and far in between. So really there is very little to support a true Zelda timeline. There is markers in the timeline, for example, like uh, Phantom Hourglass being the sequel to Wind Waker, or uh, Adventure of Link being the sequel to the original game. However, where they belong can be debated. So in this, I am going to give you three timeline theories to help you guys out make your own timeline theory. Now don't worry, I'm actually going to give you evidence supporting what I say in this video. There's a lot of people out there that make timeline theories for Zelda, and they don't give hard enough evidence for what they do. Now, that doesn't mean I feel like I'm right. I could be right. I could be wrong. Again, these are just theories. But I am at least going to try to give you sound evidence, or at least reason for what I do in this theory. These timeline theories. So, with that said, let's get on with the theory. In the beginning... There was the three goddesses, and they came down and created the earth, and with it the land of Hyrule. After the labor was done, they went back up into the heavens and left the Triforce as a symbol of their power. Now, for a time, there was peace in Hyrule, and this is supported by A Link to the Past and in Twilight Princess, stuff mentioned in those games. Until the, pe the races of Hyrule found out about the Sacred Realm and the Triforce. Because of this, there was a great civil war, which was with all the races in Hyrule, fighting over the Sacred Realm and the Triforce. In this war, a, uh, one of the Hyrule mothers brought their child over to the great Deku Tree, and there they brought their child for protection. This would be Link. Now, the war lasted until the King of Hyrule unified all the races under one royal crest. Now, with that said, that means Orchardy Time has to be the first game in the timeline. Now, wait! Whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Before you comment saying, no, you're wrong, or, oh, no, this game comes first, or before you do anything, there's a lot of debate among Zelda fans which game comes first, Orchardy Time or Minish Cap. I gave a few sound reasons in one of my previous videos why Orchardy Time comes first. I'm going to elaborate on some of those reasons right now to at least support my reason for putting Orchardy Time first. In doing that, I have to actually disprove a lot of evidence supporting Minish Cap coming first. So let's start things off. Uh, one of the reasons why people say Minish Cap coming first is because they think that the lack of Gorons and Zoras tribes in the Minish Cap support that it comes before that they showed up in Hyrule. However, there are Gorons in the Minish Cap. In addition to that, uh, the Minish Cap could take place after the flood that happens in the Wind Waker. So, that's, the Zoras are gone. They, they probably evolved into that bird race. I, I'm not exactly sure or remember if that's the case, but they're not in Wind Waker, other than the Spirit Stage. So, really, that could disprove any argument why, for that reason, Minish Cap could come first. A lot of people say the lack of references to the Triforce in Minish Cap is another reason that the game comes before anyone um, knew about the Triforce. However, the Triforce shows up in the game quite a bit, even on Link's shield, so obviously people know about the Triforce. So again, that's not necessarily something to support a reason for Minish Cap to come first. 
Then there is the Pokori. The Pokori are little, little creatures that hide stuff in grass. And they're the reason for all the rubies, bombs, and arrows suddenly appearing when you chop down the lawn. Now, a lot of people say, well, because the Pokori revealed themselves in the Hero of Men story, that means they have to come first, because then that would be their first appearance. However, just because the Pokori made their first appearance in the Tale of the Hero of Men doesn't mean they weren't in Hyrule. Not everyone knows about the Pokori, and it could just be a simple fact that they didn't reveal themselves until the time was needed. So, just because they didn't reveal themselves doesn't mean they didn't exist in Orcarian time if Orcarian time came first. Another thing would actually be the Pokori showing up in that. The Pokori show up to give the Hero of Men the Pokori Blade to fight off the evil of the land. Why didn't that hero just use the Master Sword? This falls under the theory that the Master Sword is probably at the bottom of the ocean in Ganon's head, as seen in the Wind Waker. So that there was no Master Sword, the Pokori had to improvise and give the, uh, the, the Pokori Blade to the Hero of Men. And last fact for this is that it says in legend that there was peace in Hyrule, Hyrule, the kingdom of Hyrule, until darkness descended on the land and the Hero of Men show up. With that said, in the original statement that I said beforehand, there was peace in Hyrule and then the Great Civil War. There was no mention any bit to any darkness that descended on the land. In addition to that, Hyrule was not unified before the Great Civil War, where Hyrule is unified in the Minish Cap. So those are just a few other reasons why the Minish Cap can come first. Now, there was a statement by Miyamoto, the creator of Zelda. His right-hand man said, well, the Four Swords trilogy is the oldest uh, game in the oldest tale in the timeline. However, this is totally just disproven by the fact that it's Four Swords Advance of Ganon shows up and it contradicts the other games. So he kind of bite himself in the ass and he even said that, well, me and Moe changes things around and stuff just happens. So you can't use that statement as a reason for Minish Cap coming first. So now seeing that we've taken time away from the actual theorizing to show why Minish Cap does not come first in my timeline theories, let's get back on with the theorizing. Now after Orcanian Time there's two endings. We know this. There's the one in the future and this one in the past. The one in the future is where Link is no longer there. He has returned to his own timeline and Hyrule is rebuilding. The one in the past is where Link has returned to warn Zelda about Ganon. Now, uh, let's do the child timeline, the one in the past, first. After Link returns, he leaves to go find his friend. We assume this is Navi. We don't know, but we can just assume. The events of Majora's Mask happen. After Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess happens, several hundred years afterwards. Now, we know Twilight Princess happens after Majora's Mask, because references made to the hero of time, references made uh, to the hero of time being a blood relative to that new Twilight Princess Link, and it's even theorized that the shade that teaches you the moves is actually the ghost of the hero of time. So Link must have returned to Hyrule, did another grand adventure, settled down, and had kissed. And thus, Twilight Princess would have been next. Now, I'm going to stop there for the child timeline, just for a moment, and just go on to the adult timeline. After Link goes back to his original timeline, in the adult timeline, the Wind Waker happens. The Ganon returns, and there's no hero to stop him. So the goddesses flooded the land of Hyrule to stop Ganon's evil. And that's Wind Waker happens. After Wind Waker's direct sequel is Phantom Hourglass. Let's stop there for a moment. So, in the um, timeline, we have Orphan in Time first. Then we have Majora's Mask in the Child timeline, preceded by Twilight Princess. And then, in the adult timeline, Wind Waker and the Phantom Hourglass. This is going to be the only solid thing that continues in all my timeline series. So let's just post up a picture for you. So those are the games that are solid in all my timeline theories. So let's start off with timeline theory one. And this is probably the timeline theory that I feel most comfortable with. This is the one that I like the most. So let's go. Let's go back to the child timeline. So we had Orcanian Time, 
branching off into the child family we had Majora's Mask, then Twilight Princess. Hundreds of years later, I would say, A Link to the Past happens next. A Link to the Past makes many references to Orphan in Time and has some connections to Twilight Princess, such as the location of the Master Sword, among other things. So, we can assume A Link to the Past comes next in the timeline for the child timeline. After A Link to the Past and Link saves Hyrule, he decides to leave Hyrule and journey to increase his skills as a swordsman. Thus, the events of Link's Awakening happen. The big storm happens, and then there's trouble, and Link has to do his deed. So, adventure, uh, the uh, Link's Awakening comes next in the timeline. Now, let's just take a second look. We have the first Link, Orphan and Time Link, which counts for Majora's Mask, also. The second Link, in the child timeline, Twilight Princess Link. And the third Link, A Link to the Past Link, which counts as Link's Awakening Link. Next in the timeline would be the Oracle Games, Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Now, whether or not this is the same Link as a Link to the Past, only older or not, I can't confirm or deny that. However, I can place it in the timeline for the child timeline. My main reason for doing this is because the Master Sword is still around, unlike being at the bottom of the ocean in uh, Wind Waker. And in addition to that, the evil Gerudo witches, Quindora, is still alive which was, uh, they were never killed at all in the child timeline, where they were killed in the adult timeline. So, the last game in the child timeline would be the Oracle game. So let's just take a look at the child timeline one more time. Oracle of Time, child timeline, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, and Oracle of Seasons and Ages. So that's the child half. Let's do the adult half. So after Link goes back into the past, there's no hero, the land of Hyrule gets flooded, and Wind Waker happens. And then its direct sequel is the Phantom Hourglass. Now, I need to make a statement. We all know that at the end of the Wind Waker, the Mask Sword gets stuck in Ganon's head. So the Mask Sword is in the bottom of the ocean. This is one of the reasons why I put the other games in the timeline. Not only do they connect with each other better, but also there is no Master Sword through any of these games. So with that said, I can't make any comments on the new Zelda Wii game or the Spirit Track games, but we do know the Spirit Track game comes after the Phantom Hourglass, 100 or so years afterwards. I'm not going to put Spirit Tracks in the timeline because we don't have enough evidence exactly where it goes. So let's just assume Spirit Tracks is off in, in Dakota doing its thing. Whatever. So we have Wind Waker in the adult timeline, Phantom Hourglass. Now some point between Phantom Hourglass and the Minish Cap, the land of Hyrule is found. They find a new Hyrule. And the legend of the Hero of Men happens. We have there is no Master Sword, so the Pekori should uh, reveal themselves to give the Pekori Blade to the Hero of Men. After this happens, the Minish Cap happens. Next in the timeline would be the Four Swords and the Four Swords Adventures, which we know are part of the Four Swords trilogy and are sequels to the Minish Cap. And then after the Four Swords Adventures is the original Legend of Zelda game and its sequel, Adventure of Link. Now, Legend of Zelda and Adventure of Link, the reason why they're in this timeline, the adult timeline, is one, is because Hyrule is drastically different, its map of Hyrule is drastically different than any of the maps on the child timeline. This could be because uh, the Flood and the new Hyrule that they had to find. The second reason is, again, no Master Sword. Link had to rely on the Magic Sword, among other things, the Silver Arrow, to defeat Ganon. So, again, in the adult timeline, there is no Master Sword, which is the, uh, some of the reasons, not all, but some of the reasons why these games go in there. So let's just take a look at the adult timeline. We have, again, the second Link which w in this timeline, the Wind Waker Phantom Hourglass Link. Then, we have the Minish Cap Link, which is the third Link, the Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures Link, and that would be the fourth Link, and then finally, Legend of Zelda and a Link, uh, Adventure of Link Link, and that would be the last Link in this timeline. So this is the, the timeline I feel most comfortable with, because I feel as though the evidence is supported best in these. Again, let's look at the timeline as a whole. There's the Ocarina of Time, the Split, then there's the Child Timeline, which has Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, and the Oracle Game.
Then on the adult side, there is the Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Minus Cap, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventure, Legend of Zelda, and Adventure of Link. So let's just take a look at that. Very nice. So that's the timeline I feel best about. Although there are some uh, people that would debate with me on whether or not that is necessarily a solid enough timeline. So I did two other timelines to kind of mix things up. So let's stick with what we had beforehand. Orchid of Time, the timeline split, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess in the child timeline, and then Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass in the adult timeline. So this is the second timeline theory. So we let's do the child timeline. We have Orchid of Time, then it goes Majora's Mask, then Twilight Princess. We're going to stick with A Link to the Past, uh, being the next game in the timeline, with a sequel, Link's Awakening, and then the Oracle Season game. Next would be, uh, come the Minish Cap and the Four Swords Adventure, in the Four Swords game. Now, the reason why I'm going to put the Minish Cap and the Four Swords game in this timeline, and the only reason is because Ganon shows up, and there's some evidence that Four Swords Adventure is kind of, kind of a, uh, spiritual homage to, uh, the A Link to the Past game. But more or less because of Ganon showing up. Because there's no reference to Ganon at all after Wind Waker. However, Ganon does show up in um, the uh, child timeline. So that is the child timeline for the second timeline. There is uh, Orkney Time, the Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, Adventure, uh, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, then the Oracle Games, Minish Cap, and Four Swords, Four Swords Adventure. Again, this is not a timeline I feel most comfortable with, but it is a possibility. On the adult timeline is obviously the Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, the new Hyrule is found, and then Legend of Zelda, and then Adventure of Link. So let's look at that timeline again. There's Orphan in Time, on the child timeline, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, the Oracle Games, Minish Cap, and the Four Swords Games. Now on the adult timeline, there's Orphan of Time, Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Legend of Zelda, and Adventure of Link. Now, the last timeline, the uh, next timeline, is a little bit different. And again, this is not a timeline that I feel comfortable with. However, it's still a possibility. Um, this is somewhat reminiscent to my previous timeline that I posted up. Again, we have Orchid of Time, then the Branch, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, Child Timeline, Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass. That we know to be true. In the Child Timeline, we again have A Link to the Past, and then Link's Awakening. And then from there on, we have the uh, Oracle Games, and then we have Legend of Zelda, and Adventure of Link. Now, the only reason why I'm placing Legend of Zelda and Adventure of Link in this is because in the American uh, version of Link of the Past is said to be a prequel to these games. However, uh, Miyamoto said that A Link of the Past actually takes later in the timeline. is actually a sweet sequel to these games. But, again, maybe he just screwed up when he was saying that. But, again, so the child timeline is Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, uh, A Link of the Past, Link's Awakening, The Oracle Games, Legend of Zelda, and then Adventure of Link. Uh, the, o the other thing that supports the last two games in this timeline is that um, the, the Zelda that's asleep in this timeline uh, could be one of the previous Zeldas from way back then. when. Um, if that happened during the flood, then they would have to move the Zelda, or the Zelda would have to be in a later game. You're probably confused about what I just said, so don't worry about it. In the, uh, in the adult timeline, again, we have Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, and then New Hyrule would be found with Minish Cap and the Four Swords game. So pretty simple. So the third timeline theory is Orkney in Time, Child Timeline, Minish, uh, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, The Oracle Games, Legend of Zelda, and Adventure of Link. And then on the adult timeline is Orkney in Time, Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Minish Cap, in the Four Swords game. Again, the last two timelines that I sent you are just, you know, timeline possibilities. But the timeline I feel most comfortable with is Orphan of Time, 
Child Timeline, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Oracle's uh, Seasons and Ages, and now in the Adult Timeline is uh, Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Minish Cap, Four Swords Adventures, uh, Legend of Zelda, and Adventure of Link. Now, honestly, in my own opinion, that's the timeline I would stick with. If I had my own way, I would kind of remove the Four Swords uh, series and make that a separate timeline. Uh, make it like their own timeline, because it would at least help make the core Zelda games a little bit easier to theorize a timeline, but uh, we don't have that option. So I hope these timeline series have helped you guys out, at least shed some light on some possible uh, timeline series for your own self. And again, I've given some evidence to support these timeline series. If you wish to debate or uh, ask questions, go right ahead. I'm open um, to friendly debate and friendly theorizing. Uh, but I hope this has helped you guys out. I will post, again, images of the timelines at the end, a chart of the timelines at the end. Um, and with that said, until my next Zelda theorizing, this is Andrew saying, Peace out for now.